So I'm Jenna Weens. I am a faculty member in computer science and engineering at the University of Michigan. Within the AI lab, I head the machine learning for data-driven decisions group. And we focus on developing and using machine learning tools applied to healthcare. Well, I can't think of just one, um, but if I had to think of two, uh, the first would be really the number of technical challenges associated with working with health data. Um, from a data perspective, there's a seemingly unlimited number of challenges, especially working with time series data, uh, multivariate data, multimodal data. So there are images, um, there are waveforms, there's text. And all of this uh, presents some um, very interesting opportunities from an AI perspective. The other uh, interesting aspect of working in AI and health is the potential for impact. Um, so working with patient data, working with clinical collaborators to ultimately improve patient care. In hospitals today, we're collecting a ton of data, and my group uh, works on developing machine learning tools that can identify patterns in those data, uh, patterns that can be used to sort patients from low risk to high risk for a particular adverse event or bad outcome. Uh, more recently, we've started to look at modeling trajectories of uh, health trajectories of patients over time, uh, looking at more long-term diseases like Alzheimer's disease. And we've even started to look outside the hospital um, at data collected from wearables. For example, people with type 1 diabetes will wear a continuous glucose monitor often or an insulin pump or both. And those uh, devices are collecting data that uh, aren't necessarily being studied. Um, so developing techniques that can study those data, learn from the data, and ultimately improve patient care. From a technical perspective, uh, we work across a number of different areas within machine learning, oftentimes focusing on time series since health is an evolving process, uh, and also looking at um, deep learning techniques and causal inference techniques. There is a ton of research going on at the University of Michigan, uh, specifically within uh, healthcare in this field that I work in. Uh, Michigan is in its second year of launching Precision Health, which is a campus-wide initiative involving all 19 schools and colleges. And there's just a fantastic amount of work um, that's going on that's involving both clinicians um, and researchers from across campus. Uh, we have a couple of um, high impact use cases that look at, for example, um, the opioid crisis, so trying to estimate who's at risk of prolonged use um, and how we might improve uh, the um, delivery of care and prescribing guidelines and practices. Uh, another use case that I'm really excited about is looking at mental health. Um, and collecting data outside the clinic to try to predict patient trajectories. Um, in my own work, we've been looking at predicting uh, various outcomes during hospitalization, in particular infections uh, during hospitalization or healthcare associated infections. And there we're at the point now where we're prospectively validating a model that can predict who's at greatest risk of acquiring an infection during a hospitalization. Yeah, so interpretability in healthcare is oftentimes very important, uh, but also not always sufficient. Um, so interpretability alone doesn't mean that your model will be necessarily free of bias uh, or free of label leakage or spurious correlation. So it's really important that you inspect the model and especially in application domains like healthcare, work with domain experts, work with clinicians to understand what the model has learned. Outside of work, I enjoy socializing. Um, I love living in Ann Arbor. There are wonderful um, friends and um, family and neighbors. 
Uh, so having the opportunity to uh, talk to so many interesting people and experts in their own fields is a lot of fun. So around that, I enjoy cooking and dinner parties and just hanging out with friends and family.